Hello everybody, uh, Ian Ellis here, just going to go through the process of doing the Van Gogh painting. I put a acrylic ground down, uh, a dark, quite dark brown, I haven't seen the painting in the National Gallery. I'm um, starting the painting as you can see, I'm trying to get the green right and because uh, it's so dark I assume the green I'm putting down will look too light. But I've got a funny feeling when I did it that I was making it too light. This is something I'd have to think about once the painting is a bit further on. And uh, I'm working between the... I've drawn the image so I can actually leave a line actually on the painting where the brown itself will function as a line. So I'm painting around the, the outside line of the top of the chair there. Killers are using. Uh, if you want to know, I uh, did a, a video already about the killer mixing. Once you make a palette of killers, um, when you start painting, um, you can see things are slightly out, and then you have to there your intuition takes over. You've got a big palette of killers. You start selecting a bit of this, bit of that. And obviously, you still really don't know how the colors going to work, if they're going to be the right intensity or the right darkness. And I'm putting flat colors down on the on the chair and this is I think this is how a Van Gogh would work it put flat colors down and then work over with a drawing um, so the the back of the on the wall on the door is quite flat anyway so um, quite a lot of heavy paint but you find on the chair is uh, there are drawn lines over the top and um, what I'm doing is putting the flat colors down first and the floors done the same way you see that later Yellow's gone in quite quickly. So I can judge the intensity. I've got the darkness there with the background. I've got the very light color. The very lighter colors now, I'm putting the gray tones down. I assume the background, were, were, there were tints, but um, as you can see, when I get most of the painting done, you can see the background starts looking too too light and I'm, I'm what I'm doing now is starting to flatten the floor put flat colors down on the floor you can see I've drawn everything correctly I traced it really with chalk onto the onto the brown so the floors are actually drawn but I'm gonna have to go across that and um, when I actually paint the the floor you see I have to cover up all the drawing there you go let me just start to take out the drawing by blending out. This is the thing you have to do when you're painting like uh, when you're putting flat layers of colour you're going to have to redraw things so uh, you've got to be prepared for that uh, when you're doing your own painting. Quite often people just fill in a drawing but sometimes you've got to be prepared to lose the drawing and you see it causes me problems in a bit later on and I start uh, redrawing it and I don't draw it really well but you'll see that then I have to correct it again See everything really at the moment, just flat colours. I always think Van Gogh when he paints, he, a lot of people think he's put a lot of paint out, down. Um, he does sometimes, but it doesn't let the paint get overclogged. If he, Usually when he's overworking something, the paint gets a bit clogged up. Uh, you don't see the ground underneath. So we can see when I'm, I'm putting that, I'm working pasto paint now and leaving some of the ground in between. It's a bit like painting um, a checkerboard or um, you you put a white ground and you put black or you put black down and you put white and it looks like you've painted and you can put what the white really thick or the black really thick and the back the other ones thin but both look like the thick paint because they get a shadow You're not quite sure where the shadow is I think that's what um, Van Gogh's doing he gets lots of thick paint over the top and there's some thin paint in between but you can't tell what's thick and what's thin and the best ones work when you've got both thick and thin I think when he's actually got it right more or less first time So think about it, it's three layers. 
you've got the background color, then a flat layer of color, then the final layer. With the final layers, the thicker paint. Now the blue lines, I think uh, the most uh, original thing in this painting, I think, are the, uh, as far as techniques concerned and the colour, are the blue lines around the chair. I think it's the blue lines that actually stop it from being an impressionist painting of a chair. Plus all the space, the space of the painting is flattened by the way he's drawn it. Uh, but his space is very much drawn, uh, as opposed to someone like Cezanne, where it, the space is more painted with flat areas of colour, and you get a sp spatial conflict going on, but with Van Gogh, it's a drawn space. He's like a draftsman, like a, he's like a classical artist, is that? but actually using um, a different technique influenced by Japanese art and Gauguin, people like that. What's amazing as well is it's just a chair and it's just setting off doing a painting. He's done a masterpiece just painting a wicker chair. It's just quite incredible. Really. Uh, there's so many people love this painting. And it's uh, unfortunate, like I said in the, in the video when we were showing how you can mix the colours. Also show how, how the, the, the colours work um, in, one paint, in one video. I, sh I explain why I think the, the colour contrasts uh, are strong or where they're strongest. Now, you've got the green at the back, the yellow green, you've got the oranges of the wicker and the oranges on the floor. Mix those, your eye mixes those together and creates a yellow, yellow light. Um, and you can see the, already the yellow is starting to glow a little bit, but it's not quite glowing as much as I'd like it to. I think it's because everything is too light, but I'm going to carry on and adjust that later. Now drawing the lines of the floor, I'm trying to be as accurate as I can, but I don't think I've I pull it off first time. I have to, I think I end up doing a drawing in, of the floor, and uh, and what happens is the spokes of the chair start getting mixed up with the lines on the floor. You can see that. So uh, I'll come back and redo this later. Been a bit clumsy way of drawing that. Put the black lines in as well, they're, they're important. So emphasize the, that's when you start seeing things that are far too light. See, I'm starting to darken, putting a heavier green down. Uh, the, the back of the wall, it was made with vermilion uh, and yellow and, em and emerald green. And the vermilion and emerald green create a darker color. So if you, to darken the green, I just needed to do is add the vermilion to it. And you, sit, you do that later when I start darkening. Um, also, if you add the ultramarine blue, you're getting the complementary of the yellow green. Yellow green, if you um, vermilion and ultramarine make a kind of purple, and if those three colours are on the back, on back green behind the chair, the chair, and you can see on the wall at the back there, that's the colours I'm focusing on. I'm trying to get them right. It's still too light. The blue green on the, the green blue on the right is still too light as well. Um, but that the complementary of that is vermilion and all I need to do to darken that is actually add vermilion on the surface of the painting which kind of breaks through rules a lot of people say you should never put mix colors on the surface of the painting but when the paint's quite thick like Van Gogh's I think I'd get away with it a little bit now I'm painting the pipe and a little bit of paperwork in there to make it work is and sit in the space, the negative space is very important. You see, I come in and do a little negative space. It sits, the white at the moment sits and floats on the surface. But I bring a little negative space in. This is a dark bit. You'll see me put on her in a minute. Then 
There you go. Just put it in. That's a, that little dark bit's just above the chair leg. It's very help hold it together. I've written his name purposely, so it's no forgery. This I've, I've, I've written his name very uh, clumsily, uh, so no one knows I'm trying to rip him off and tell this is a forgery. But I don't know how we believe it will be a forgery. I don't know. We'll see at the end, shall we? I'm putting vid um, vermilion red on those greens. It's getting to be darker. And ultramarine blue comes in there with them as well. So it's mixed verm um, vermilion red with the ultramarine blue. You get this lovely purple, which is actually a darker version of the yellow green. I'm putting the vermilion on the blue. Vermilion red, complementary. I can see, put the tape back and I'm just widening the, the painting. Make it look wider. Just turning up a little bit. Going a bit more darker. More vermilion red on the green to make it darker still. A bit of ultramarine blue in there as well. You can see I've just put some vermilion on that, and more vermilion on there, getting it even darker. Maybe going too dark, but I'm trying to just get the balance, get the yellow to glow. It's more light and dark, and perhaps putting in than uh, Van Gogh did. I'm not sure, but I'm trying to remember the image. I'm just working from a print. And the print I've got is I'm following the colours. I'm seeing the print, which you'll see on you should see on the right of you, the right of the image. Some of the lines I'm having to redraw, I've lost them. I wanted to keep the brown underneath, but I had to redraw some of them. Some of them you can see it's still left with the brown underneath. Right, that's it. That's the finished painting. Hope you enjoyed that. And that's my final painting on the Van Gogh series. I'll be perhaps coming back and again talking about the space and the drawing in his paintings. And the next artist we're going to look at is Edward Hopper. So look out for him. And uh, thank you for joining. Bye, everybody. <laughs>